Hi right, everyone, Cody here. So this device, I'm not sure what I'm calling it, but its purpose is to oxidize urea into nitrate. Basically take urine into something that'll burn plants if you put it on it, to a usable fertilizer, which won't. Now let's uh, unwrap it so you can see what's in here. I've just got a tarp wrapped around it to give it a little bit of insulation and also to keep the sun off of it so it doesn't grow algae. All right, so here you go. You can see it's just made out of plastic barrel and a trash can. It's got this lid on here. You can see the trash can portion is filled with charcoal. And I've got this which sprays water from the barrel up into the charcoal. It's modeled after my fish tank filter because its uh, operation is very similar, except Instead of fish producing the ammonia, I'm producing the ammonia. <laughs> uh, let's uh, turn this on. I've got it set on a timer, so this comes on periodically. See, the pump only runs like a couple hours a day. Let me force it forward. There we go. See, the water is being pumped from the lower reservoir up through the charcoal where it's mixing with lots of air, and of course bacteria, which is living on the charcoal that can oxidize the ammonia into nitrate. Uh, you might notice there's an air line going in here. There's an air pump uh, forcing air down into the lower tank. Uh, that's just uh, to add additional air when the pump's not running to keep things from going anoxic. Now you might ask uh, why I didn't have the charcoal just down in the barrel and then just have a forced air instead of a water pump. Uh, well, I was trying to copy my fish filter, which I know works. So it's very similar to the design. But also if the power goes out, I wanted the bacteria, which is mostly a surface living uh, type of bacteria, to not be drowned in an anoxic water. You know, if it consumes all the oxygen in the water and there's no air pump supplying more oxygen, then the bacteria dies. So I wanted to keep it so it'll fail safe. The bacteria is mostly up here in the charcoal. If the pump's not running, it's still in an oxidized environment because you can just get normal airflow through it. And also, if you think about it, the energy it takes to pump water up is the same as it takes to pump air down. So really, it's not that big of a difference. Anyway, I wanted to grab a sample of this, so let me just grab some of this. I'm going to analyze it for the nitrate content and such. I started off feeding this about 250 milliliters of urine every couple of days, and then I slowly increased that as the bacteria grew. I knew I had fed it too much when it started to smell like a truck stop bathroom. When that would happen, I'd just not feed it for a couple of days and it'd go back to smelling like a well-cycled fish tank. Just kind of a musty, earthy smell to it. I got to the point where I was feeding it about a liter a day, including all of the urine that I produce in the morning. And it was still able to process it without smelling like ammonia, which is great. Uh, right now, it's actually gone about a week without being fed at all because I was off on vacation. Uh, so it's definitely has no ammonia smell. Everything should be completely oxidized. In fact, the water looks uh, pretty clear. Yeah, let's go test it. Okay, so here's my test strip. I'm gonna dunk it, give it a couple of swirls, and then pull it out. Now it says to read the carbonate and general hardness right away. Yeah, that's, general hardness is off the charts. As I'd expect, there's probably lots of dissolved solids. The carbonate hardness is fairly low. It's like only maybe 40 parts per million, maybe even zero. Uh, that's uh, interesting because I do have quite a bit of limestone down in the bottom of the barrel. And that limestone should be dissolving and increasing the carbonate hardness. But the pH is also fairly low. You see that says six. 
could be even lower than that. And that tells me that the acidity is destroying all of the carbonate and turning it into like chlorides or nitrates and such. Now, it says to wait a little bit for the nitrate and nitrite, but I can already tell that it's, it's way up here. It's off the charts. So, we have to dilute the sample. So, we've got a scale here. I'm just going to take off 10 grams of the sample. So, 10 milliliters. It's a little too much. Oh, okay, that's good. And then to this, I'm going to bring it up to a hundred. So it'll be a ten to one dilution. If the wind could calm down, that'd be great. Okay, excellent. So here's my 10 to 1 diluted sample. Stick that in there, give it some swirls, pull it out. Yeah, the general hardness is still showing very high. pH is still showing low. Let's give it a little bit to develop the nitrate and nitrite test. Now this one, having sit for a little while, oh yeah. Nitrite, nit nitrate is off the charts. Nitrite might be might be fairly low, which is a good sign for me. That means the uh, bacteria is fully oxidizing it to nitrate. So my 10 to 1 diluted sample is definitely not as dark as the undiluted sample, but we're still pretty up high, maybe around. 80 parts per million or so. It's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, let's say it's about 80 parts per million for the nitrate with the 10 to 1 diluted sample. That means we're up around 800 parts per million for the undiluted sample. This test does not directly detect ammonia, but I imagine there is some still here. You see, the urea breaks down into ammonia and carbon dioxide through enzymes that bacteria produce. And then that ammonia is oxidized to essentially nitric acid. But nitric acid and ammonia will neutralize to make ammonium nitrate. And even if there's ammonia here in the form of ammonium in the ammonium nitrate, I'm not going to smell it unless I raise the pH significantly to the point where the ammonium nitrate breaks down back into ammonium hydroxide and sodium nitrate. So let's just uh, add a bunch of this to my full strength sample, give it a stir. Now I might see calcium precipitating. Yeah, so I've got calcium hydroxide. Let's give this a smell. Oh yeah, I can smell ammonia. It smells just like uh, like a window washing fluid. <laughs> so it does have the uh, nitrate in the form of calcium and ammonium nitrate. Now the ammonia and the ammonium nitrate should continue to oxidize by the bacteria, and I know it is doing that because the pH is low. The pH being low, however, will slow down the bacteria, so it's kind of would act as a limiting factor. That's why I've got the lime chips in there. The lime chips are supposed to react with the acid, keeping the pH fairly high up where the bacteria like it. Clearly, the lime chips are not sufficient, though. So I'm going to try adding some chalk. So this is some limestone chalk here, and I'm going to crush it up. That way it's got a very fine particle size. It should react faster. So I'm just going to crush this and add it into the charcoal. That way it has lots of opportunity to react with the fluid, keeping the pH high. There we go. That should help keep the pH up. And if it doesn't, I can switch to using lime. But for now, let's just turn the water back on.
There we go. It'll wash it down into the charcoal. As I mentioned, this has gone a while without being fed any fresh urine, so I've got almost a full gallon here to feed it. And it might be time to reflect on the fact that I'm pouring a gallon of urine into a barrel of bacteria while out in the middle of nowhere. It's a wonder I'm still single. <laughs> So oh, there we go. I've confirmed that it is working. It is oxidizing the urea, turning it into nitrate. And I was able to detect that it does have nitrate in the system. Awesome. Now before you ask, could this be used to make nitrates for gunpowder? Uh, yeah, probably. If it ran for long enough. <laughs> uh, so I forgot to mention that it has been running since August. It is currently October. That's uh, 76 days, and it's able to process, I'd say, about a third of my urine. I think uh, three of these or more would be able to process everything I've got, which is less than I thought. I thought maybe I'd have to like scale up to something huge like this, but no, this seems to be working. And uh, who knows, maybe the bacteria will continue to grow. Uh, it is starting to get cold now. Uh, the bacteria works best in the heat. As the weather cools off, I expect it to slow down or maybe even quit, so I'll probably have to bring it indoors and keep it warm. But there you go. This is how I'm going to be processing my liquid waste here at Chicken Hole Base. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.